Hello everyone, hope you're all well. 2019 has been an interesting year for the survival open world genre, and 2020 is around the corner. So I thought I'd do a short video going over some of the upcoming open world survival games that are meant to release in 2020. Some of these I'm very, very excited about. Uh, if I've missed any games that excite you, please let me know in the comments. Developed and brought to you by a Russian company called Bad Pixel, Deadside is a hardcore multiplayer shooter where you're immersed into realistic gameplay in a grim, post-apocalyptic world. It aims to keep the balance between the dynamic of a shooter and a hardcore survival game. The game world doesn't feature as they call fantastic elements like zombies or anomalies, but the game focuses more towards players' attention on realistic aspects of life in the ruins of a dead civilization. So, as you can see, you're not going to be running around the map dealing with zombies, you know, like most other survival games. Uh, the only real enemies on Dead Side is going to be other players. Um, but they have spoken and said that there are meant to be NPCs roaming the map, both friendly and hostile. Uh, that's something I have not seen or tried in a survival game, and I would love to see how it works. And then there are also traders, so where you could buy weapons, ammo, I guess clothes, food, etc. And green zones, uh, where I believe you can store away valuable items and interact with both so other players and NPCs. So as they say, the map is filled with large open spaces with some bushy forests and abandoned settlements. And it's, it's a large map, it's actually 225 square kilometers. Uh, and using the daisy map, Chanaris, as an example, it will be a very similar size to that map. The map is of course filled with roads and rivers, and there will be vehicles for both land and water. They've been releasing some footage of the weapon animations, showing off the world and character creation. So they haven't said too much about base building or raiding, but they do have some form of it coming in the future. In their own words, In the course of our game development, we are planning to create a system of shelters which players will be able to build on their own using a well-developed craft system. We also want to offer players a chance to make small stashes in almost any place of the map to keep a few handy things at ready. But the number of stashes each player will get will be limited so there could be a lot to come from dead side i am personally very interested and excited about this release and i will definitely be keeping a close eye on the development updates now we have dead matter developed by quantum integrity software inc the game is estimated to release as closed alpha in march of 2020 but we'll be seeing a roadmap around January, laying out their plans moving closer to the release. The game's been in development for a couple of years now, and they've been posting development vlogs showing the community what they've been busy with ever since, and there's a lot of excited people. The map is based off Alberta, Canada, and will start at 25 km squared, but it will expand throughout early access. The map's going to be filled with vehicles to explore a detailed map with many randomly generated locations. And vehicles are pretty common, they've said, but they usually spawn broken down, so you need to find components, tools and fuels to get the vehicles working, but also maintain them. They also have aerial vehicles planned, like planes, uh, which will of course be a lot harder to find and also a lot harder to get working but it's definitely something that not many other survival games have got. You can survive dead matter by hunting, camping or farming. They already have numerous weapons with a variety of attachments. They also aim to allow players to craft their own improvised weapons, uh, so makeshift melee weapons like a spear or bow and arrows um, and a flamethrower which they've actually already got implemented. There's also NPCs on top of zombies where you can do tasks or missions or even trade with them. You just gotta make sure they're friendly. Now moving on to base building. 
So Dead Matter is less focused on standalone bases, as in buildings built from scratch, but it's more veered towards fortification and barricading existing buildings. So you could use sheet metal or wooden planks to block off windows, and they've got tons of storage items allowing you to stash away all your goodies. And lastly, modding for Dead Matter, or from the lead developer's words, we plan to let the community mod the absolute hell out of Dead Matter, which is really, really cool to hear. Um, the community will be allowed to get creative with their own ideas pretty much on the get-go of Dead Matter. On top of all these large features, these guys have a load of other smaller details which I couldn't possibly get through, but really does set the game apart from others in the survival genre. They seem like a very committed development team, and they're super transparent with the community. Hopefully we'll see a smooth game release as early in 2020 as possible. Now, this is definitely different to the previous two games we've been talking about. Last Oasis is a nomadic survival MMO developed by a team called Donkey Crew. Essentially, the lore is that the Earth has stopped rotating and the last survivors need to outrun the scorching sun in a massive open world. You can travel the world on wooden, wind-powered walking machines like you're seeing on screen. Uh, these things are called walkers, and they can be used for travel, transportation, harvesting, combat, or used as an actual mobile base. From what I hear, there are many structures, attachments, and upgrades you can make to these walkers to pretty much personalize them to your needs. It is a survival game, of course, so you'll need to find ways of surviving, gather materials or resources, craft tools and equipment, and build a static or mobile base called a walker. Or oh, it doesn't have to be uh, a base, it could be a moving, massive weapon, if you like. The longer you're alive, you can improve on skills, and your character will just become stronger. There is also some, part, some sort of training system, which I don't really want to get into. Uh, but moving on to the map, which is also different to what you're probably, you've probably seen in the past. Uh, where the world consists of multiple maps, or an oasis. And each oasis is around 100 kilometers squared. And between these oases, there is an area called No Man's Land where you can pretty much quickly travel to a different oasis or just safely log out. I know that might be a bit, well, really confusing. <laughs> so if you want any more details, then find out in the description. Uh, but to go a bit deeper into bases, you can either construct a portable base or you can have a permanent base stuck pretty much to one location. Uh, so the benefits, of course, of having a permanent base is you can fortify it with stronger materials like stone, whereas wooden walls are going to be inferior in terms of breaking in and uh, damaging, but you'll have the leverage of being able to kind of pack it and relocate. They've also got a really cool melee weapon system, and the game is apparently very playable both solo and with friends. There's a lot of other features that I haven't spoken about, like a grappling hook, um, so if you're interested, information will be down below. We then move on to Rust, which I know has been out for years, developed by Face Punch, as you may know. But I thought I'd add it into the video for the console players, as it's set to release for both Xbox and PS4 in 2020. This is definitely one of, if not the most popular survival game out there, and for a good reason. The game is primarily based around base building and raiding, but with a lot of PvP action and kind of your own self-set missions in between. Uh, there is a lot to do in that game, but I definitely say it's a more casual experience than most. But believe me, it can be a lot of fun. Now there's already many content creators out there where you get a much better understanding about the game, but just to give you a brief, you spawn in naked with just a rock and a torch, but using the rock you can hack at stones or trees, collecting stone or wood, and improve your tools, find clothes, food, other materials, and pretty quickly you can start working on your base. You always start small, but expand and improve your loot as you go. Another thing to mention is most servers do wipe 
weekly or maybe even less, maybe every few days. Which is why I say it's more of a casual game. And I know that might be a bit off-putting for some of you, but it's almost what makes Rust so good. I did want to keep it short because I know there are many other existing videos and creators out there you can get a much better idea of what Rust is about. Just type in Rust on YouTube and you've got all the content in the world to go through. So that's Rust set to release in 2020. Last but not least we have Dying Light 2, a sequel to the original Dying Light in 2015 developed and published by Techland which is planned to release in spring of 2020. Now similar to the original game it can be played single player or you can play with up to four people. So it's not an MMO style game but for what it is I'd say it's a lot of fun. It's a first person zombie survival game with a lot of parkour and a massive map to explore. You're playing as a character called Aiden who's an infected survivor fighting off the likes of bandits, factions, survivors roaming the map for scraps and of course zombies which are much more sensitive to light and usually only surface at night time. The map is apparently four times the size of the original Dying Light and I don't actually know the size of that map but apparently it takes around 20 minutes to get from one side of the original map to the other. This new map will be inside a city where resources and power are scarce and unstable. This is a game I'm not too familiar with so I don't have a lot to say about it and this video was more focused on games that are kind of more massively multiplayer. Dying Light should be out for PC, PS4 and Xbox during spring of 2020. And that's my list for upcoming open world survival games for 2020. As I said, let me know if I've missed any games that excite you. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe. And thank you for watching.